maybe you... oh you're recording okay um so yeah <laughs> sorry is that it yeah i think i was just going to start talking over myself if i kept going well that's sorry. okay since i just turned the recording on so go ahead <laughs> um what did I say? In the paper, they stated that majority of society just conforms to what is presented before them. Um, and yeah, I said that I believe that this is key because there are people who stand against and they're like, you guys are just following a system. Uh, you're just going along with what your parents say. Maybe you should step back and find out what you believe for yourself. Okay, if that makes sense. Now, when you question, is it possible to question for the wrong reasons and to end up worse? Yes, I think when you do that, you have to look at everything, not just think, oh, well, everything that they say is wrong. Maybe think they started off somewhere, but they probably missed a step, you know? Okay. And then... Um, when college students question, for example, that's college is set up for you to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're intellectually capable, you're ripped away from home, you're thrown in with a bunch of people who have, were raised with a different view. So it's sort of begging you to do this, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, why? Why do we set up small elite private colleges, right? Originally, these were set up for the best and the brightest. Thank goodness, you know, it has a wider clientele now. And that's just because um, we've decided to give some tax money to supporting students. And donors have decided it's in the interest of the society to do this. Well, why, right? Um, just think of it, there's a philosophy behind small liberal arts colleges. And the philosophy is that it's good to break away from imitation habit and custom and question things and get exposed to other peers and professors that have a different worldview. So the professors are there because Every professor you have, except maybe some of the old humanities ones, uh, could make more money doing something else, right? The mm -hmm. ones in business or math or science, especially. So why are they doing what they're doing? They have some sense of purpose, right? And so, and they're different purposes. So you have all the differences among the faculty. And then you have the differences among the students. And so the setup is to get you to rethink, right? And you can, you don't have to throw away everything, um, but you have to re-examine everything and then you have to embrace it, okay? So from now on, well, my mother told me to eat my vegetables and I didn't want to, so I get to come to college and she's not going to be yelling at me. Oh, but I read about vegetables. Oh, okay. So from now on, I'll eat vegetables, but I'm not going to do it because my mother said I'm mm -hmm. going to do it because I read about it, right? Okay. Um, so then some students, you know, there was a time when uh, slavery was considered socially acceptable, right? And if you question it, you were in trouble, <laughs> big time. Mm -hmm. uh, there was the whole Southern hospitality thing where, gee, Southerners have the best parties. Well, they have slaves taking care of the details. <laughs> you know, you can have a pretty nice party if you have all this free labor. Oh my gosh, I just, <laughs> it blows me away when people talk like that. Don't you know where that came from, you know? Oh, Jesus. Anyway, and then there was, you know, um, sharecropping. That was not much better. And then there was um, 
Reconstruction and then there was Jim Crow. And I mean, there's a whole history there about what is socially acceptable and what is not, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know this, but the Ku Klux Klan, the name of that organization is based on some uh, European, uh, Scottish or Irish or English sort of aristocrats. And so they define themselves as trying to preserve Western civilization, right? <laughs> That's like, yeah, okay. Um, so, so racism was socially acceptable. Sexism was socially acceptable. Um, and we're still going through that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in theory, small liberal arts colleges, people should come to these schools and if they were raised racist or sexist or you know, discriminating on sexual orientation, the institution is based on reason. And it's, it, you know, it's our mission. It says in our mission, we do not discriminate on the basis of race, class, gender, or sexual orientation. So students are supposed to come and re-examine their upbringing so that our society can actually conform to the truth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But that's not what she says, right? She says everything is relative. So then if everything is relative, then it's a battle for who gets the most, the rhetoric that can convince people that this is what's socially approved, mm -hmm. right? And those are the battles going on on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. What is it that's going to be socially acceptable and what's not? Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Um, but I think when academics, I mean, it's just very ironic. You come to college, the whole setup is for you to re-examine according to the truth. And then you have a professor that tells you everything is relative. Is that crazy? I mean, does that make sense? I'm sorry, what did you say? Um, so the, the institution is set up with certain mission statement and certain clear values and you come, to, you come to college, it's set up for you to re-examine, but then you have a professor, and I don't, I don't refer to any at Lyon because I don't know, but if you come and you have a professor that says all values are relative, isn't that crazy? I think um, all values are, by relative you mean individualized, right? To that well, I mean, person. whatever is no, it means what's socially acceptable. Okay. Right? That's what that said. Whatever is uh because if we all agreed that you know killing is morally acceptable, I, I mean I feel like we would all <laughs> yeah agree. And then yeah, in my paper, I just argue that there's a reason why that headhunting went on, right? Mm -hmm. So is there somebody there that you need to talk to? Or... Okay, so if there's somebody that is outside the car that you need to, you're, is distracting you that you just- Oh, need... okay, sorry. Um, okay, I mean, if somebody's knocking on the window or something, that's fine. You can just tell them what you need to tell them, but- No, I'm, um, I live in a camper van. I'm, there's my neighbor. Oh, okay. Um, so anyway, let's see. Um, all right. What if we decided at Lyon? Well, I think it's also true that we're destroying the earth, right? And there, mm -hmm. that's just a fact. And we're living way too high a carbon lifestyle. 
Now, what if at Lion, collectively, we decided we're not going to believe in climate change because we want to use however much carbon we want to use, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make it okay? Does that make it true? No. Yeah, well, that's what she's saying, though, right? Socially approved. Right now, using as much carbon as you want is socially approved. Mm -hmm. And people who question it are really demonized, right? The like childhood marriages, I mean, child marriage is how it was once socially acceptable, and now we know that that's not okay. But it's there's true. still some cultures that agree that it is. Yeah, and Bangladesh, it's standard stuff. So the students I have there, most of their friends are arranged marriages. <laughs> anyway, and then, I mean, I talk to them about that because I say, is it utopia to be able to decide who you're gonna marry? Well, people make a lot of mistakes there too. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so my point, I guess, is that the writer of the article does not really believe what she's saying, <laughs> okay? What she really values is critical thinking. And what the West really values is critical thinking. And we have a lot of institutions set up to cultivate critical thinking, like small liberal arts colleges, right? They're set up to trigger that higher level of reflection. Um, and that's not a neutral value. As a matter of fact, most people in most societies do not engage in critical thinking. Does that make sense? And none of the people in the society she studies and sentimentalizes engage in critical thinking, right? She looks at those cultures and she says the reason to study them small island cultures are that they are consistent and well integrated with themselves and so in the society that wants to protect its yams you know everybody's just everybody's out to get my yams you know we would think that's really crazy but she says you know, it's well integrated with itself. And then the head hunting, the chief's daughter gets killed and he says, I gotta go out and kill somebody and then I'll feel better, right? That sounds horrible to us. And, um, and she's just telling us you can't have that value, right? It's all relative. Now, my answer to her is, first of all, there's a reason for it, right? The reason is that if you, if your survival depends upon everybody obeying the chief because you're on the brink of survival all the time and you can't have people uh, living outside of the box or question you're you know you're just always on the brink you have to have unity and so when the chief shows signs of weakness that he doesn't control everything that could destabilize the tribe and so he needs to go there and show that he's still in control right and so there's a survival value to that it's not because I decide I don't value human rights or human dignity, right? It's, it's related to what the tribe, how it's evolved and how it has to be run, at least as far as they know, um, to survive. And the same with the yam seeds, right? They have to have some kind of social custom and habit 
that will absolutely ensure that their yam seeds uh, are preserved for the next season. And they get hungry. And it's very tempting <laughs> to want to eat the yams. And so there have to be all this social conditioning in place not to eat the yams, right? And this paranoia and this obsession with your yams is one way to do it. It worked. Um, and then the acceptance of homosexuality makes sense. On a small island, you don't need more people. Um, so why not find a place for them and it's perfectly fine and they're not going to reproduce. That makes sense because if you have too many people, then you, you know, you got to send a colony. It destabilizes the culture. And then with the mystic trance in India, you had a lot of poverty and a lot of tribes moving in and out. So how could you maintain stability? Well, keep people focused on being really obsessed about inner peace. And so if they are obsessed about inner peace and mystic trance is what they honor, they're not going to be aggressive. They're not going to sort of be fighting against each other all the time. They're going to get along under very difficult circumstances. Does that make sense? So then you could say, well, why has the West developed the way it's developed? Well, what is it that we have decided is going to be our survival value? Well, until recently, um, we evolved in a way that we bet that science and technology was going to be the best bet for our flourishing. Does that make sense? And yeah, what yeah. what kind of a what kind of conditioning do you have to have? If you're gonna decide your survival based on science, that's always changing, right? So you're not gonna want people to think we're gonna do it exactly the same way, because then your science won't develop and then your society won't flourish. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then we had a reason to cultivate critical thinking because that was the decisions were made and it is the process of evolution that that mm -hmm. would enable us to flourish. That was the direction to go. And especially when Westerners came to the US. And this was a, you know, the city on the hill that we're going to cut down the trees and grow plants and have a frontier. So people came here for two reasons. I guess I'll stop the recording here. Or I'll pause it. Okay, so the idea was in America, People came here for two reasons. They came for economic opportunity and they came for religious freedom, okay? Now, in terms of a, a healthy psyche, this matters. And we did talk about Augustine, right? And, and so I want you to think about this when it comes to a healthy psyche. Um, our founders were in Europe and they were, they had an entrenched class system, right? There wasn't any hope for you to get out of the class you were born. Now, if everybody by nature has the same capabilities, then that's unhealthy. It's an unhealthy culture and it'll keep half, two thirds of the population will be legitimately frustrated, right? And they will be unhealthy because they have natural abilities and the culture doesn't let them develop those abilities. So it, it was a good thing for them to come over to the US 
under the promise that they could become more human and and successful according to the world so there would be their natural capabilities and then opportunity provided by the country right mm -hmm. and that over time what really worked for getting wealthier was science and technology right you start out i'm sure with agricultural technology like better plows or whatever and then gradually it builds up okay but of course we also had slavery which was a ball and chain on this project right it's the opposite of what the culture was supposed to represent the culture is supposed to be about capability development and then you define african americans as not naturally capable that was a lie. And our society is living with that lie, right? And it's still a huge problem because the next election might be determined by a political rhetoric that focuses on, you can't make me, you can't make my kid read these books that make white people feel bad right mm -hmm. and that's i mean that just shows that we have lost our way in terms of our original reason for being right mm -hmm. and that goes back to martin luther king where he said you know i'm just trying to make the founding fathers I make good on what they said, right? Mm -hmm. That we are equal by nature. So that that is still a huge problem, the cultural part, the denial of equal capacity of regardless of race and gender. What's the other reason people came here? The other reason was freedom of expression. Yeah, they want to live a better life. Well, there's a better life. That's economic. But religious expression. So in Europe, especially England, where a lot of them came from, the church, there was a established state religion, which was the Episcopal religion, which unified reason and faith. But there were other religious sects like Calvinism, uh, Puritanism, Anabaptists, uh, Unitarians, uh, free thinkers, the humanists. There were a lot of other sort of weirdos, right? People mm -hmm. that were not socially acceptable outside of the norm in terms of religious belief. So they came here for that reason. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, now here's the issue. Is it okay to believe anything you want religiously and have a healthy psyche? Ivy, I think we've been- Yes. What? Can you hear me? Yes. I believe that if your religion is keeping you motivated and down a happy like progressive life then yes you it as long as it's good for you if but if, you, if, if it if, unites if, reason and faith right i'm sorry if you unite reason and faith so you do science in the name of god and social right yeah okay i think that's what you were talking about earlier in the earlier classes because remember that article about the woman who was raised as as a Calvinist and her parents. And she raised her uh, kids differently. She didn't teach yeah. them about sin. Right. So that's that's what I'm getting at, right? Okay. When we came over, when the religious sects came over, the the thesis, the premise was that you can teach any religious stuff you want as long as you keep it in church 
-hmm. But when you're acting as a citizen, you've got to base your stuff on science and creating a middle class, right? Yeah. Okay. But what's happened now with our country? Um, 85 of the founding fathers were Episcopal. I don't think there were any Baptists that signed the declaration, maybe one. And if so, the Baptists that came over were absolutely obsessed with separating church and state because if you united them, they would have to baptize their babies, which they did not want to do. That's why they came here. Mm -hmm. um, is that the country we have now, spiritually? Now we have more than 50% of Americans split reason from faith, all right? Mm -hmm. And they're anti-science. Is that what our founders were? No. No, not only that, but people who are anti-science are okay with authoritarianism, right? It's okay if the leader says that they're in control or if the leader says that they follow Jesus, you don't have to make them accountable, right? Does that make sense? Yes. So our founders thought if you wanna have some preacher like that, if you wanna have blind obedience to a preacher, fine, but not in the political sphere, right? That's That was the divine right of kings. That's what they had in England that they were getting away from. But uh, my, my thesis here is we are a different country than we were. Now, the next thing is, what does Benedict say to that? Well, it's all relative, right? As long as it's socially accepted. It's always going to change. And as long as we can get everyone to be on the same page, no problem, right? Do you think Ruth Benedict herself would be all okay with making our country into a Baptist empire? No. Well, but she said it was all relative, <laughs> right? Do you uh, I mean, I get, hmm. it would probably be better for everyone to be on the same page on religion because there is a lot of um, tension. But if they were, the vast majority of churches in the US do not treat women as equals. Uh, Four out of five. It's even more conflict. Well, not if we can get those feminists to get socialized and accept the norm, <laughs> right? Would, yeah. Okay. What if, what if the norm becomes ignoring the racism of the past and the legacy, right? We're not gonna pay attention to the fact that blacks have never had a chance to get a decent house that has an amortized mortgage that has a, where you develop equity, the value of the house goes up. So you actually keep making money through your equity on your house. Blacks have never been able to live like that, but we're going to ignore it, okay? And we're going to make that the norm and you better conform. Is that good just because we're conforming to it? I feel like there's always going to be some kind of conflict. Yeah, except that. What if you just, um, but some conflicts are based on it's kind of right. hard to know what's good and what's not with that being said. It, I think it's what's going to create the most kind of conflict. Well, Martin Luther King was criticized, right? Because you're creating conflict. You're causing violence. Does that make sense? Yes. Does it matter if the cause for why you're causing this is the truth, or if it's just to manipulate people, or if it's your own power. I can get elected if I say, I don't wanna talk about the racism of the past. That's how I get votes. 
And if we can get enough people on board, then that's it. We're gonna be a country with racial amnesia. And that's just the way it's gonna be. Is that- It matters because it's supposed, you're supposed to do it for the truth. If you do it for anything other than the truth, then it's seen as greed or uh, villainous. Well, it's not seen as that, it is that. Well, it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so. The thing is, then Benedict is wrong, right? It's not morally relative. Does that make sense? Yes. There is a foundation of truth. Some things are true. That people are not, people are that racially, gender, sexual orientation does not alter people's natural capacities. So a good society is one that cultivates natural capacities, that sets up institutions and programs and all sorts of stuff to try and enable people to develop their natural capacities. And a bad society is one that keeps trying to condition people to accept that people are inferior based on race, to accept that people are inferior based on gender, to accept that sexual orientation is perverted, non-binary, to accept that we can use as much climate, as much carbon as we want, right? Those are lies. No matter how much you condition people successfully to believe them and to be threatened, if anybody questions it, it's still wrong. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Ivy? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, All right, I have it up to my ear so I can hear you. So your generation is going to have to deal with the destruction of life on earth, all right? That's not a matter of opinion. And Americans are so conditioned to not quote unquote believe in it that they are threatened. I think there's people who will be threatened by any mandate from the government saying you need to drive a, a electric car. You need to buy insulated windows, we'll give you a tax break, we'll even give them to you, but you need to use them. There are people who will say, no, that government is trying to take my freedom away and they will not drive an electric car. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. That's how conditioned people have gotten. They don't want to hear about it and they get a trigger reaction if you try to wake them up to it. But if kindergartners had gotten conditioned from when they were little to care about the animals, to care about the earth, it would not be a problem at all. Do you understand this? Yeah, when uh, that's kind of like when I try to speak with my grandma about religion or anything, she's kind of like, okay, yeah, whatever you want to think, but I know what's the truth. Well, her survival, her survival has been associated with it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to appreciate that. That if you take it away, she's going to feel extremely threatened. Mm -hmm. And it isn't her fault at all. As a matter of fact, I think the church was a great savior for African Americans at a time when the society just locked them out it kept reminding them that you are a child of God and you do have the capacity that white people have. And so the church was constantly telling the truth and reminding African-Americans that the society is wrong. And then the fact that the church would have these institutional structures and they would, you know, there would be, it would like a little mini society so that people did learn management skills, organizational skills, 
they learned how to be organized and to improve their lot and to develop their humanity in the face of this horrible treatment. 